And you said you're going to be, you said you're going to be cutting this down later so we can like ramble. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, all right. Hello, you guys. How are you doing today? Doing great. I'm so happy to hear that. And I'm so excited to talk about the Falconer because it is such a crazy story. I can't believe it's actually true. When did you first hear about this friendship and what persuaded you to make a film about it? Uh, so I first learned about this story back in 2011. In January, I was uh, traveling for another film about breakdancing around the world. And I was in Yemen and I met this blonde haired 13 year old kid in uh, Sana'a, the capital there. And he stuck out like a sore thumb, but spoke perfect Yemeni Arabic. And uh, he was the one who told me that he worked at this zoo and that he had this friend and told me about this, the, the story that ended up becoming the Falconer. Um, and we stayed in touch. And uh, a year or two later, uh, Shauna and I approached him and asked him if he would be down to let us make a, a movie about his story. That's such a cool experience. Has he had the opportunity to watch the film yet? He has, you know, he was actually on set with us as we were making the movie as he was our onset animal wrangler. He's gone on to train um, 86 falcons since this original falcon. And so um, it was really special to have him there. And then we actually were able to smuggle the real life Tariq out of Yemen. And it was the first time in you know, seven, well, longer than that, two years that they had seen each other. They were separated because of the war in Yemen and um, were reunited on our set. So having both of them there was a really big part for us of making the movie. That's so crazy. What was it like working with all those animals? <laughs> Magical? I mean, it was really special. Tareem, the real life Kai is, um, he's kind of like, I don't know, he's just, he's got this soulful presence and just really um I think he just ignited this incredibly deep love for each of those animals in everyone that was on set so it was this privilege of getting to fall in love with each of these unique little creatures that were part of our production yeah that having him on set was really fun because whenever it, it was because he was he's so attuned to the natural world and to the animal kingdom he would just like find random animals in places you know like there's a scene that we wrote into the film about us that involves a sea slug crawling along Tarek's arm. And that was just because we had been out location scouting and he had found these sea slugs and we ended up deciding to write, write them into the story. And that kind of stuff would happen all the time. He would discover wounded birds and help them. Like it was just a, a really fun experience. Wow, it's so cool to hear how like behind the scenes is almost just as cool as the actual movie to have all these amazing experiences with these animals. I'm curious how you're able to recreate the small village in which the story is based on because obviously you can't film there. Well, we, you know, in general, we had always wanted the story to take place in Yemen where it originated and um, because of the war in Yemen and because of our being a small film on a small budget, we didn't feel like we could authentically do that. And so what we did is we went to Oman, which is right next door. There are many ways in which Oman is very different, but there's also a lot of cultural crossover there. And we found this little village um, called Yiti village uh, just outside of the capital of Muscat and really made that village our home for our film after going to a lot of different places. Um, and Shauna can maybe talk a little bit about how we work with that village too. Uh, you know, I think for us is because kind of, I, I come from a producing background, Adam comes from a documentary background. And I think we had this unique ability to be able to write towards our locations. We knew the story so well, we had written so many drafts that when we found our location, we really started working with the village, like particularly the village women to really make the story really authentic. And then Yusuf, who is kind of our, locations person um, is actually a goat herder in that village. And a lot of those goats featured in the film are his goats. So we were really able to, um, you know, our, our goal was to make a movie from a place, not about a place. And to do that, you really have to embed yourself with, with people. So those women that are in the wedding or that band that's in the wedding, those are all the people that actually are part of the weddings in that village um and they had a big voice in informing how we shot it and what was included and um it we really i feel like we had this privilege of making a movie with the people from ut and i feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with 
what I found really fascinating, which is that you guys were able to kind of break down those stereotypes that Hollywood often portrays on the Middle East. Was that important to you in making the film? It was super important. Yeah, Sean and I have both traveled extensively and I think have been, uh, you know, had our own prejudices broken down and had our eyes opened as, as happens when you travel to, to those kinds of stereotypes. And, and I think we're aware that whenever you go into a place and you're not from it, you're, it's always possible to get it wrong. And, um, but we, we really did try our best to surround ourselves with a chorus of voices who were gonna help us um, try as best we can to get it right um, and to tell a story that was gonna be accurate to this place. But a lot, and a lot of that plays out in, even in the visuals in the way that the film was shot and in the, um, the decisions that we made of what to show and what not to show in our story. I think I would even go so far as to say that it's the reason that we made this movie um, is, is that having lived in the Middle East and spent extensive time there and having a lot of friends from the Middle East, I think um, it so often English language films paint that region in really broad brush strokes and have caused so much harm um, in the way that we exist as humans in the world. And um, in a lot of ways, this movie is a love letter to that region. And um, it was a huge privilege. Dana Ballou, who's, who is our co-producer, she's Lebanese, and she was actually the person that took us to Oman the first time. Um, Musna, who's our associate producer, who's an incredible filmmaker in her own right from Oman, um, just surrounding ourselves with these really strong voices um, and making the movie together, not, not, not just having them help us make the movie, but truly making the movie together um, and telling this love letter about this place in the world that we really love. So um, I think it's the reason we made the movie. I love that so much. And the movie is fantastic. So congratulations, you guys. Shauna, Adam, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you Thanks. so much. I appreciate it. Awesome.